Not only is battered woman syndrome still being used as a legal defence, but premenstrual syndrome has also been pleaded in cases of murderous females. PMS is the very same condition that can never be used against a woman if she's sacked from her job when she freaks out in the workplace. Please stop throwing shoes at me! Yet it's often used in her defence when she murders a man or her baby. In fact, women seem to be afflicted by numerous syndromes, all of which allow them to kill in cold blood and be considered blameless. Battered woman syndrome, premenstrual syndrome, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, whatever the crime, there's a female-only defence using some kind of syndrome. Hey Lois, look at me. I got postpartum depression. Wah! I'm sad about stuff. Wah! Men don't have the luxury of falling back on a syndrome when they commit crimes. No study has ever investigated how men might be affected by chemical or emotional conditions and why men might kill. When men kill, they're just considered evil. In their eternal search for equality, it's odd that women are content to be treated differently in this regard. An examination of homicide figures in Ireland between 1992 and 96 reports that the victim was male in 15 out of 20 cases committed by women, and in 35% of cases, a female perpetrator killed her husband. The report concludes that females are far more likely to kill a spouse than their male counterpart, and they're also very unlikely to be punished. But for some reason, we're never presented with facts like these on the news. The film Provoked is based on a true story in the UK, where a woman called Karanjit Alawalia murdered her husband, Deepak Alawalia, by using napalm to set him on fire while he slept. <laughs> We had Karanjit Alawalia given a bravery award by Cherie Blair for having set a light and killing her husband. It wasn't petrol she used to burn him alive. She actually learned how to make napalm. Do you know how to make napalm? If you reacted in self-defense against an abuser, do you imagine your response would be to learn how to make a chemical weapon and then use it on someone while they slept? This sort of calculated murder would seem more like revenge, and in English law, taking revenge is not considered self-defense. However, her appeal against conviction was successful using the defence of battered woman syndrome. On the face of it, it seems completely understandable that a woman could suffer abuse for years and then finally snap. And if she'd stabbed him with a kitchen knife when he was hitting her for the hundredth time, I could understand that situation. But researching how to make napalm, preparing the mixture, waiting for him to go to sleep and then pouring the mixture over him, and then setting him on fire, that is simply not a human reaction in self-defence. I don't quite know how to describe the barbarity of such a crime. Anyone that kills like this should go to prison and should stay there for life. The planned killing of her husband was successfully presented as self-defence using an invented idea. One has to wonder at just how cheap a man's life has become. She served three years and three months for murdering her husband, even though a conviction for murder is supposed to carry a life sentence in the UK. And it gets better. After her release, she was presented with a medal for bravery by Cherie Blair, the ex-Prime Minister's wife, at the first Asian Women Awards, who was jailed for life for setting fire to her husband, has been honoured at an awards ceremony for breaking the taboo of domestic violence. A bravery war? What was she being brave about? She killed her husband. Could you even conceive in some wild imagining, whatever the circumstances, whatever the provocation, could you imagine a man receiving a medal for murdering a woman? This is the extent of the hatred directed at men from the highest levels of society. Cold-blooded murder is acceptable as self-defence if a woman is the perpetrator and a man is the victim. Looking into the commentary about this film, reviewers go out of their way to declare that Deepak deserved to die. Yes, and it's possible he drank her blood and made her eat camel dung. We can't ever know, because it's not possible for a murdered man to defend himself. But the real issue is this. How do you even know she was abused? Why else would you set your husband on fire? Because you ran out of charcoal? If a man can deserve domestic violence, even unto death by burning, can a woman deserve it too? We once again come back to worthy and unworthy victims. A man can never be justified in his violence, whereas a woman must always be justified. Karanjit has published an autobiography. It's available on Amazon at a very reasonable 1485. Just as with Lorena Bobbitt, it seems that in our male-dominated society, Women who murder or mutilate men do very well for themselves. 
This woman poisoned her husband by putting antifreeze in his food, leaving him brain damaged, blind and partially deaf. Needless to say, domestic violence wasn't mentioned in the media reporting of this poisoning case, even though it clearly qualifies. This is true of all reporting covering assaults and killings of men by women. Women's violence against men is almost never officially categorised as domestic violence. 